torture and all that, they're, and dying, their blood cries out to God. In the book of Revelations, you have those who are martyred for him under the altar of God, crying out for vengeance. When are you going to avenge us, oh God? When is this going to happen? Look, we died, and, and God gave them a new robe. Their bloody robes were right there. Because their blood was crying out to God. How much you know that God... I mean, the thing, the people that we've hurt, the things that we've done, innocently, innocent people, I should say. I mean, that just always stays in my mind. So when God had to come down himself, it wasn't a good day. All that was going on, and you imagine the burden that the father was carrying as he comes and sees Abraham. And God says, you know what? In order for me, now listen to this, okay? Isaac had to be born and Sodom had to be done away with. Because he was not going to let Isaac be corrupt by the world. And that was a bad place. And so he had to judge it. Okay? Let's read this real quick. Verse 9, chapter 19, excuse me. Now the two angels of Sodom, amen, in the evening, and Lot was sitting at the gate of Sodom, and Lot came, uh, saw them, and he rose to meet them. All right? And he went out toward them, and he said, Here, here now, my lords, please turn in your servant's house and spend the night, and I'll wash your feet, and you'll rise early in the morning and be on your way. Okay? But they said no. Okay? They were there for a purpose. You know, in the book of Revelations, we find angels standing over with with vials. Judgment. Huh? Judgment. Ready to pour judgment on the earth. For what? All its sin. Okay? And then <clears throat> the Lord or excuse me, the angels turn around and tell and let them know, amen, that they're there to pronounce judgment. All on the ungodly. Now, you and I would think, you know what? They deserve that, right? Well, yeah. Do they deserve that? No. You don't think they deserve that? Yeah. Look at all, I just tell you all the wickedness things yeah. that they've done. How much of the wickedness have we have done? Huh? A lot. Huh? A lot. Yeah. Okay. Long live. Do you think we deserve that judgment? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So if they deserve, they is gonna, they're going to suffer vengeance of God by fire coming down and burning them all up because that's what it has to do. It has to be burned away and cut off and killed. And after that, they're all going to go to this place called hell. Yeah. Okay. Did they know it was coming? Did they know that it was coming? Mm. Sin blinds. You know what sin does? It really blinds you. Yeah. Especially those who believe they're right. Sorry. <laughs> Try to go talk to a Mormon and tell him he's wrong. So, what about the punishment? Okay? These were disobedient people. They're in Numbers chapter 19. Now, now, what's the difference between them and these people in Sodom? Both rebellious. Okay. So, I don't think there is a difference. Sin is sin. They're both, and if they don't repent, they're going to go to hell. Right. God has a cutoff point. 
Okay? Grace runs out. Yes. And those who die at an early age, you think God meant for a man to die at 35, 25, even 45, even my age. Way to talk to him. Now, if somebody died in their late 90s or even 100, first thing comes out of our mouth, man, they lived a strong, good life. Right? Right, yeah. yeah. There is no, you're like, well, you know, God's going to have some type of favor unless we understand what God is doing in our lives. But at some point in time, I mean, God's going to hold judgment to us. Yeah. If we die at an age that we're not supposed to, we destroy the destiny He has for you. You see, this is what my whole point many times, I would tell many guys, amen, who passed away, sit there and say, you know, God has a destiny for you, but they chose the wrong life, and then they pass away at an early age. They drink themselves to this, they OD, they get themselves beat up. Whatever the case may be, you go out to do evil, you'll find evil. Okay? It's destructive. And you're pleading with them, don't do these things. So what happens to their lives? What would you say about medical conditions then? Who? Medical conditions. Repent. You have to repent. Each medical condition leads up to one thing. Yeah. Look at the life of a sinner. Okay? Now, if you know you have a bad liver, okay, someone who drinks and drinks and drinks and drinks and drinks and uses drugs and drinks and drinks and drinks and drinks, and drinks. at some point in time, they get a bad liver. somebody's going to get a bad liver. Yeah. I know I do. Okay? Then you're going to turn around, well, he has a, he's sickly, he has a condition. Who caused that condition? Okay, let's say like most of us suffer through diabetes. Okay? Well, I'm just trying to think I don't want diabetes, but guess what? Whose fault is it? It would be mine. It would be mine. Why? Yes. Because so I let my body know. Yes. We have sown into sin and done all these things. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, what if most of us have those of us that have disabilities that have that? Yeah, that has one of our own doing. Not of your own doing. Right. Well, I mean, yeah, I understand, okay? But Is it's what you understand. Huh? It's what God does in that time. You may suffer with certain things, but you're not suffering like everybody else does. Mm -hmm. Okay? You may, like, I have diabetes. I have rheumatoid arthritis. Don't, and, but I walk around and don't feel like it. Don't seem like it. Okay? But I put myself through there. Okay? <laughs> God has a purpose and a, a vision for every soul. But if you're treated, let's say for instance, so like, well, this person's at a young age, well, everybody feels sorry for him because he has a condition. Okay? Instead of teaching them, you can over, be an overcomer through that. Okay? At some point in time, you become an adult and you're influenced by, let's say, a young lady or pornography or whatever and your parents always told you stay away from that it's not of God and you still went and did it whose fault is it now okay you make a choice to do those things you're sowing into sin and you shall reap the consequences of that sin and you can say well I never know that was wrong no 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 it's your fault that's when people want to use their condition as innocent you're not that innocent come on I'm guilty yes Okay? You can have godly parents. Okay? And still want to be a rebel. Yeah. Dang. So is it the is it the parents' fault? No. Whose fault is it? Okay? There's not a time and a place where God's people did not know the truth. They didn't want to hear the truth. Okay? They didn't want to hear it. Just like people today. I, I won't accept that. So there is punishment for believe for non-believers. And those who are, are in hell are suffering to this day those punishments. Okay? So let's stop right there and take a break. We're going to stand up for a minute and then we'll come right back. We still got a few. Go get a soda or just Pastor Joe Diaz back.
Amen for part Amen. two. Everybody give a shout. Yeah. Yeah. How many are scared right now? Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to go to hell. Yeah. No, we're, we're to get, uh, uh, go to Revelation 15 real quick. Now, as we, as we shift things here for a second, okay? Revel attitude of the world and God. And God has to judge this world, okay? One day this is all going to be over. No, I don't want to mis misinterpretate anything, okay? But uh, the whole subject of what we have been learning these last few weeks on false teaching and false, okay, false prophets, as Jesus says, things to be aware of, things that may check our hearts, okay? You guys are learning how to conduct yourselves as men of God. Okay? And if we, we fall short, that's true. We get upset with one another, okay? Uh, just like the disciples did. Jesus, Jesus is the word of God is there for each and every one of us to keep us away from this place. I just want to know if you guys are well aware that hell's a real place. Yeah. Okay? And the characteristics of an ungodly person is always going to be the conduct, things that come out of your mouth. And the things that you do. Okay? You gotta remember those things. Okay? It means your attitude. Okay? If you rather not have this a part of your life, then you know what? You're in the wrong place. Okay? This is what it's about. It's constant. Especially you guys are not like the world. This is Christian Outreach Ministries men's home. It's not VO and it's not VL and it's not assemblies. This is Christian Outreach. Okay? We do things our way, according to the Word of God says. Okay? The best as we can. Okay? Doesn't mean that we don't fall short. Doesn't mean that we don't have our own personal hangups. Doesn't mean that we still battle those inner things that ugh, get the best of us. Okay? But we have to be well aware that God is always <laughs> up and the devil is down. Okay? Hell is a real place. So if we look at the first, as one man says, the attributes, okay, of an eternal God. And the world, the way the world is right now, the way the world is right now, let's, let's look at the world right now. Right now. Here we are, uh, January 11th, 2021. Okay? No longer 2020 is done. What did we experience in 2020? Corona. That is the topic. But, it's, but it was, but it was, far, no, civil rights always been here. Corona has been the main focus of the entire world. One thing has to do with, okay, let's say, for instance, uh, uh, riots and all that, okay? They're uncalled for. Okay, hold on. So that's America's issue, okay? Division in our leadership is an American issue, okay? Uh, who will they like as president or not is an American issue. Okay? Gay value is an American issue. Okay? All sexual sins are bad. Okay? All sorcery and drug abuse. Okay? This is our problems in society. Money, greed, America. It's promoted. Okay, it's promoted, right? Okay, so here, here, here you have that. But the main problem in the in the entire universe right now, or 2020, was sickness, sickness corona. and corona. It affect everybody. Those things don't affect other people, but this pandemic has affected the entire universe. Okay, that's how God. How we know that God is causing judgment. Okay, so if we need to look at certain things at how the world is right now. Okay. Now, if people want to blame a certain person 
for all these things. But this has been going on for quite some time. Gay marriage wasn't Trump's fault. Okay? Well, I'm not going to say it wasn't Obama's fault. No. Whose fault is it? Man. Satan. Satan. <laughs> Satan. Yes. Okay. Spiritual and physical accusations blaming each other. Where's that? The Bible says that Satan is accuser. So if you look at where we are right now in society as a United States, where are we at? Yeah. Well, I I do think I saw something yesterday that uh, well that Obama was trying to basically push more acceptance into homosexuality in Kenya and Kenya responded like we don't want none of that talk here but and then also uh, I read something where Paul some of the people that he was saving back in that time in Roman era were homosexuals adulterers and prostitutes yeah so that's true yes but if you look at what the scripture says in chapter uh, chapter 1 verse 18 okay but what he was doing was telling them, hey, this is wrong. They were not only having relations with each other, they were having relations with animals. Oh, well, Come on, don't be surprised with that. Stop, <laughs> stop, stop the drama. <laughs> stop the drama. You guys live too close to the border. <laughs> Some weird things happen the other side. They bring them over here. <laughs> BCL is nasty. All right. Yes. Well, he'll get them to repent, though, right? All grown men, there's some drama right now. Well, he was getting them to repent. Yes, yes. He was yes. trying to save yes. their lives, telling them, hey, this sin, is bad. Sin is sin, whether it be sexual, murder, or whatever. To God, it's all the same, but there's always repentance. Yeah. If you ask God to forgive you of your immorality and change of your ways as much as a drug addict would say I don't want to use drugs no more forgive me of my sin you'll forgive that yeah. okay but you can't see here we have in, in this world today is that you have a church with a pat with a lesbian pastor okay that's not of God <laughs> yeah, that's weird that's really bad. no it's not of God and if you have a priest who likes men, that's not of God. Or a little boy. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but what about the it's situation? No, okay. Of it's not of that's, Why that's is not, it I'm telling you, it's not of God. When you do these things, you're sowing into sin of the world. What's gonna <laughs> happen to the world? What's gonna happen to people? People are gonna go where it's comfortable. Okay? Look, I, I say this over and over. You guys, think, okay, we know sinful thinking in ways. Yeah. But if you go to another place and they never hear about what, like, greed's a sin. True. true. Okay. Self-righteousness is a sin. Okay. True. Uh, a man looking at a woman is a sin in lustful ways if he's married. Okay. okay. All those are sinful thinking in sinful ways. When you don't hear or expose those things in other ministries, okay, or other people, you'll never know it's wrong. And you'll go on your life thinking you're right. So it's no one's being exposed. When you're being exposed, does it feel good? No. It does not. When you're reading your Bible and it's like, uh oh. Yeah, I am. Uh, so so there what God is saying, if you look at society right now, everybody's so focused on Mr. Trump and so focused on Mr. Biden. Yep. Okay? They have this has nothing to do with God. You got all these, and I'm gonna say this carefully, I should well I'll just say it. Prophetic people, all right, going on and, and, and talking and prophesying, he's still gonna be the president 
and and they're gonna this and and they're gonna. And it's not true. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What what I mean is not true is that they have no focus on what God is doing. They're focusing everything on Mr. Trump and Mr. Biden. And no focus on who should we really serve. We're serving God. All the politics is doing is dividing the nation. All it's doing is, is putting us in a bad place. Are we, are we afraid? Yeah, I'm afraid that the church is going to go through some heavy things. But then yet, that's what God wants us to go through. Okay? Now, I might get a lot of flack out after this, <laughs> but we should never take a side. Okay? We take, if we're going to take a side, let's, take, let's look at the Bible, what it says. True. You know, let me tell you something. There was David and, and Saul. The people had to make a choice who they were going to follow. Okay? David's choice was God. But even David blew it. Everybody loves to, you know, and, and David deserves his due, but he blew it. You know what that shows us? <clears throat> Excuse me, you know what that shows us? <laughs> we can blow it. Oh, yeah. Okay? So if, if we look at the world right now, every one of you has a different opinion on it. <laughs> Maybe you have an opinion, maybe you don't. Okay? But where is it at right now, in your point of view? Mm -hmm. Rick? As where I think we're facing, we're going through, like, see, judgment, and we're going, it's going to get worse, what you say, because it's just it's ridiculous out there. What I see going on, I always see on TV and all on the news. Yeah. And on, and, and, and you know what? Let me quote some persons that, oh, you're watching the mainstream media. They're false. They're liars. Yeah, but. It's, okay, if you can look. Okay, wait, 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 wait. I'll let you guys go ahead. Go ahead. Um, so you're saying. <laughs> no, I want you to say. No, no, no. But, no, you, but you're, you're saying that we can blow it, so we haven't blown it yet? <laughs> no, what I'm saying is, is that even David, being a leader, blew it. Yeah, and that we're we're just as acceptable to those making mistakes. We're not we're not exempt. I okay. think I'm blue Leaders, already. that's why. We don't, no, 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 the, 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 yeah, but we can repent today. Okay. The, diff really the difference is David repented. Saul never did. Okay, that's what okay. So so there's a difference there. Okay. Okay. Um, what I'm saying is is that if we look at what is happening right now, okay. Is that, yeah, we're, it's not going to get better. But if you, how many seen last week what happened at the, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, it was ridiculous. It looked chaotic. Okay, that was real bad. All right, it was real bad. Okay? It was a preach, <laughs> terrible stuff. Okay, but then the commentators, one saying, oh, it's this and that, they're blaming Mr. Trump. The other say, oh, it's Black Lives Matter and Antifa, blah blah blah. Yeah, all these things. Okay. All right. We should never take the toll or want to go hurt people. True. Yeah. Okay. No matter what side you're on. Okay. You, you, it's it's not a matter of opinion anymore. It's an opinion. My personal opinion, they're both wrong. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't matter. But look what it's doing to people. Yeah, Christians, not 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 the world. The world we expect that it's causing Christians to come against us. To come against the very foundation that God laid out. It's terrible. But if you had to look at that, okay, the reason I'm saying all this, I'm sorry, you had, you were gonna say something else. Uh well I was I was just going to say, my, my whole point with that Kenyan and Obama thing was that there's also a growing acceptance for homosexuality, which goes against God. Okay. So, basically, I read somewhere that 
to continue living in sexual sin shows rejection to God. Well, I don't know. Well, uh, <laughs> no, no, it has a lot to do with what our society is like. Okay? But let's look at chapter, look at for verse 14, uh, verse 14 of Revelation 14. Revelation 14? Yes. Revelation 14. Actually, Jeremy, read verse 15 to 16. No, read uh, 14 to 16. Sorry. And it says, Then I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and on the cloud sat one like the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him who sat on the cloud, Thrust in your sickle and reap, for the time has come for you to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. So he who sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. Okay. Wow. Well, okay. There he is. So, What's so a sickle. Sickle is. It's a reaper. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, okay. A reaper is. Right here, So, God tells us at some certain time, you know, if you sow in the word of God, you shall reap the blessings of God. But if whatever you sow in your life, like in the world today, it's, it's being um, at some point in time, you know, this is where a lot of mid trip. Uh, uh, rapture believers say, "Oh, this is the rapture of the church, and this and this and that." There's, there's all kinds of points, okay? Um, but this is for what God's saying in His in His lap that you're gonna reap the get the wrath. Yeah. God is trying to warn us that there's some 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 bad things about to happen. In verse 18, it says, "Another came out from the form of the altar, who had the power of, over fire, and he cried out in a loud voice to him." Who had uh, had a sharp sickle, saying, "Thrust it your sharp sickle and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth and the grapes, for they're fully ripe." Okay, and God was going to cause wrath to come upon the earth. This is the time we're in. Is this happening right now? Yeah, yeah. it's on its way. Okay. Okay. Well, look, he's he's to go. Well, this is what he says. Chapter 15, verse 1 says, For I see another sign from the heaven, and a great marvelous sign, uh, seven angels having the seven last plagues in them, the wrath of God is completed. Okay? So, there eventually are the seven plagues, and the seven plagues, okay, are uh, where the sea turns into blood, water turns into blood, uh, all these things that fall from heaven, we call the rocks. Asteroids. Asteroids, okay. All, all kinds of things start happening. Okay, right now, I don't think it was last, the other night or the past night, um, uh, okay, about, it was a few weeks ago, we saw Saturn and Jupiter come together. Now they have the three planets coming together, lining up. Okay, and each one of those things, listen to this, okay? Remember that those two stars that came out? Yeah. Okay? And then just last, this was happened a few weeks ago. Okay, remember, things that happen in heavens end up hitting the earth pretty quick. I mean, they come to earth. Mm -hmm. Okay? And tensions got worse amongst our politicians yeah, sure that did. affected the church. Church people were getting mad at each other. Okay? You have all these prophetic people saying this and this and that. Now they got to backtrack and it's crazy stuff. And all it does is, is, is bombard your brain and makes you all confused. Yeah. Okay? And then all of a sudden, what happened last week? Now the stars are lining up and doing this. And do God is trying to tell us something here. Something's coming. Something's coming. Something's coming back. Jupiter and Saturn, that represents, Jupiter represents God. He's trying to say something to us. Those stars are lining up for a reason. Everything that God is doing is for us, for us to be ready and be prepared. If those things are lining up, and this is what God is saying, is that what are we as Christians doing about it? So the Bible teaches us that there's angels in heaven, they have vials. Okay? And they're filled with wrath, and pretty soon they have to pour it out into the earth. Okay, so so if that's starting to happen, where are we standing? That people are going to die. 
Okay? People are going to die. Remember uh, a few years back when that tsunami hit Indonesia? Oh, yeah. Nobody was even prepared for it. Water just started coming in, boom, and hundreds of people were on, on the ocean, just right there on the shores of the water. No more. Instantly. Instantly. If you were an Indonesian, then you believed in their God. <clears throat> if you were a Christian on vacation, let's you're say you were Catholic, you believed in a Catholic God. You're if you were a Mormon or whatever religion you were, you believed in those certain. But in an instant, your life was taken. Swept away. You know what their bodies end up going? And in the sea. And where do you think their souls went? Down to the yeah. Imagine that. So, if all these things are happening right now, okay, imagine if you guys saw what happened last week. Okay, with this uh, individual, all right? They're all stormed, our nation's capital, and they all went there to do damage. And tell me they were going to protest peacefully. Yeah. Okay? It didn't, didn't look like it, right? And then, okay, I've been in violence in my entire life. I have broken into houses. I have been in gang fights. They're like Braveheart. <laughs> okay. I have been in fights with cops. <coughs> okay. Riot with cops. Yeah. And I was in the 92 riots in LA. Okay. Ooh, that was a I was in the midst of it. Right. And I've seen things all my entire life. Okay. <coughs> but I know for a fact if you're trying to kick in a door and break some windows and that person has a gun they're gonna get shot you gotta prepare to see what's on the other side how many guys know that already yeah oh yeah oh yeah you're trying to kick something down and that person's packing okay and all i can think is what in the heck was in these people's minds <laughs> to go to the most secure, it's supposed to be the most securest place in the entire nation to and think in. that you're going to break in without getting shot. But they didn't, though. No. The le young lady who's 35 years old got shot and poof, and yeah, they showed it. Well, the kind of far they got. They Do got you think it was worth it? No. 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 In her rage, in her ar, boom, death, immediate death. In her rage, and that, where do you think her soul is at? Oh, you happy, bro? She got killed. Yeah, she did. Went there. I'll play that girl at the gun range. Little girl. She was shooting and shot the instructor. In an instant, life changes. She went from rage to death. In an instant, your life changes. And and we could be sitting here right now, okay? Just like last Wednesday, we were here doing Bible studies, and chaos was happening. Now, we expect that maybe in Oregon, in L.A., in New York, and all these other places, but not in our nation's capital. Yeah, that's, that's the weirdest thing. Yeah, yeah. You can't tell me. I just that. want to know how. Let me tell you, I can't. You can't tell me that the Mali forces were not involved in this. And people get mad. Yeah. Are you sure? Point being is that you know what. Judgment is there for everybody. What do we stand? Now, if I believe in God, God's in control of all this stuff, then I have to put my trust in God and not in man. If it, God turns around and says, hey, we want this guy to be in office, then so be it. Yeah. Hey, I didn't want Obama to be president. 
I prayed hard, but I wasn't listening. I guess. <laughs> I prayed, man. I, I, man. I was. I'm gonna fast, Lord. I don't want this guy to be a president. I don't want him. It was either him or Hillary? Yeah. Well, no, Hillary wasn't running. No, Obama. So, so I don't want. I don't want that happening. So you know what? And and it still happened. So. That shows me, don't put faith in man, put faith in who? God. God. God still took care of Man, God's going to fail you. Always. All right, let's look at uh, some views here. Revelation 20, verse 13 and 14. Okay, so we can finish this off this morning because, you know, you can, uh, you know, there are very many, very, a lot of arguments. You know, it's the, the fascinating one that really, really gets me. That uh, Mormons believe that Jesus and Satan are brothers. Yeah. 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 Yes. I've heard that. I've heard that. And if I was a lost soul, I probably would believe that. Okay. If, if they were going to hold you, yeah, you would have been a believer. Just like we believe in the Yorona. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> come on, how many, come on, Ozzy, how many stories do you have ever heard oh of the Orona? A whole bunch of <laughs> I was a kid. How many know what the Orona is? Yeah. Come on. Yeah. 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 The woman laid by the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. The yelling woman. That's the woman that cried when she drowned her kids. Drowned her kids, she she drowned drowned her kids. Yes, yes. Isn't it true? And some say it's a true story, yeah. and some say it's fiction. Or it's yeah, made up, made up. It's old fable. It's a, it's a short old story. fable. And we do it to scare our kids. Yeah. So what? <laughs> so they won't go outside past 10 o'clock at night. Because yeah. <laughs> the Rona. I remember walking home late at night thinking, oh man, oh man, the Rona's out there. She's going to come creep up on me. And you're like, I am running. <laughs> Yeah, that was a big one. That was, no, the Arona was ours. Yeah. There was a Chupacabra. That's true. All right. So people have, there's a lot of arguments on how being a literal place or a place that's just an imagination of some believer so we can scare people into salvation. Yeah, I've heard that. Okay, you've heard that? Okay, so a literal view of it is what the Bible teaches us. That's Okay? Yeah, yes. These are something that are, are true because we learn it from the Word. Jesus taught more about hell, okay, than anything else. Now, there are some discrepancies today that we heard from uh, some uh, theologians would say, you know how he says that they've been weeping and gashing the teeth? Yeah, we Okay? Well, when he says that, 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 that you'll be outside and they'll be weeping and gashing the teeth. Now, some believe that the, gashing, the weeping and gashing the teeth are those who are left behind during the tribulation. Okay? This is what's said. Okay? But really, what he's teaching about is hell. Okay? There's a lot of weeping in hell. Okay? A lot of sorrow. There's a lot of crying in hell. I mean, I, I mean remember, first of all, we talked about complete darkness. Yeah. We talked about the sulfur that's down there. How do we know it's sulfur? Because of volcanoes and everything else. Mm -hmm. The heat in the core of the earth. earth. Okay, I think, okay, well, you got to see the earth, and then they drill down, and you got water, no water, or oil first. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then you go further down, crack through that, you got magma. Right. And it has the gas that shoots out of that, right? Yeah. That gas is the sofa. What can it do to you? Kill you. It gets into your lungs and does what? Yeah. That's why you're drilling. Okay. Okay. So, the literal view that one dies and he goes to hell. Okay. Now we, we talked about the, uh, the false teachings, this and this, all these things, our conduct, our attitude. Okay. Uh, the adjustments that we need to take, basically rebellion. Okay. We're being rebellious. 
All right? And these are the areas in your life that we need to stay away from and be obedient unto God. Now, we look at the great white throne of God, okay? And this always takes me back to Matthew 25. And we'll, we'll look at that in a minute. But if you look at verse 13 and 14, want to read that, Jeremy, real quick? Okay. Yeah, verse 20, real quick. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them, and they were judged, each according to his works. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Okay. How many of you believe right now is your name written in the Lamb's book of life? Three, <laughs> four. <laughs> <laughs> can you find out for me? Well, you can't be for sure. You can't you can be for sure. You can't. I mean, the Lord says, in the, uh, if we uh, confess it, you know, believe in His heart, believe in our heart, confess with our mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior, that we shall be saved. And being saved is, is the way the Bible puts it: is that uh, there's a, a life, uh, Lamb's Book of Life, and our names are written in. And we accept it and now go and maintain this lifestyle. Stay safe. Okay, stay safe. That means that, okay, now for those who believe one safe, always safe, mm -mm, you can do it backslide. Good luck for that one. Uh, how many books are there? There's seven books. What are, what are they? Huh? Like, what are they? They're... There's, okay, the book of life, and there's the book of living, and there's uh, what you say, coming out of your mouth, uh, the book of tears. Okay, Book of Remembrance. I think and the there's the Book of remembrance. Seals. Okay. Huh? Was it works? And the, yes, the Book of Books. So okay. you don't put your death on. No. no. But you did. You did. There ain't no book on it. Okay, so. Now this is what it, the, the sea gave up his dead, and uh, uh, they gave him up to Hades, the dead. <laughs> Amen. He begins to share with us. Okay, judgment is coming. Mm -hmm. Now go to Matthew 25. Okay. All right, because if our names are found in the Lamb's Book of Life, now anybody wants to encourage you and tell you, okay. Now, if I was gonna see, say, say someone who was uh, uh, maybe not even a drug addict or an alcoholic, but smoked cigarettes, okay, chew tobacco. How would you tell that person they're jeopardizing their salvation? You know what? Like, well, I'm still going to heaven. Hmm? Why? Well, why? And because you're defiling your body? You're defiling the temple, the very temple of God. Okay? So what are your chances of making it to heaven? Slim to none. <laughs> so what if somebody who never smoked, drank, or did, but they like sleeping around with a bunch of girls? They're Probably not. <laughs> not <good either. laughs> but I went to church. <laughs> Sorry, it doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. So, so... What the Bible teaches us in verse 31, he says, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all his holy angels are with him, he will sit on the throne of his glory. Now, this is speaking of Christ. Okay? And he says, And he will sit on his throne in his glory, and all the nations will be gathered before him. Revelation 20. Okay? Okay. And then, and all the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them from another. As sheep, as a shepherd divides sheep and goats. Yeah. Okay. The, why does he use goats? Stubborn. Stubborn. Everybody knows that. <laughs> Hard headed. What else? They don't fall in a group. They, they, they stray off by themselves. They're selfish. Yeah, yeah they go off on their own. Yeah. Don't follow me. <laughs> okay. And what are sheep known for? Following the herd. Following the shepherd. Hearing his voice. Okay, and so, and then he will sit on the, he set his sheep on the right hand and the goats on the left hand. <clears throat> and, the king, and the king will say to those on the right hand, 
Come you blessed of my father's inheritance and kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Verse 35. But I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty, you gave me drink. I was a stranger, you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me in prison and came to me. Okay? This is how Jesus answers the question when it comes to the book of life. Okay? Here's how the righteous will answer. This is how you will answer when you stand before God. Okay? Let's imagine this is you. If you're doing these things, so you're saying the word not, the righteous. listen to what I'm saying. I'll say what I'm saying. <laughs> listen to it. If you are the righteous one and you are doing these works, these are the works of God. Okay? This is what a disciple's reward is. Okay? And then he says, then the righteous will answer, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry, feed you thirsty, give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in, naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick and in prison and come to you? Here's what the king says. Should I say it unto you as much as you did it to one of least of these my what? My what? Brother. Okay? You did it for me. But then you who like to help each other, you who like to go out and help someone, you're doing it unto Jesus. You who don't like to help anybody else, are you doing the Lord's work? No. Okay, so here we are in this literal place. Okay, you guys, if you guys don't like authority, you despite, you won't like what Jesus just said. Okay? He's the king. Okay? You won't like that. You will be selfish. You'll take care of yourself. You'll be a loner. Okay? You'll live in solitude. You like that. You'll reject authority. You'll come against authority. You'll be insecure about yourself. Okay? You will be a goat. <laughs> yes. Verse 41. So he'll also say to those, amen, on the left hand, which are goats. goats. <laughs> Depart from me. And then he says, curse it. Into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. So, he's not giving you a blessing, but he is sending you into a place where you can really want to be alone for eternity. Okay? Where you can be by yourself forever and ever and burn forever and ever. It feels like it's getting hot. <laughs> yes, David. I got a question. Why do they say that the devil has angels when angels are? I understand, okay, what you found. He, remember, when he was cast out of hell, I mean, out of heaven, he goes down and he takes a third of the angels with him. Okay? We don't know. There's a lot of speculation on how that was done. Okay. But one is understanding is that he manipulated other angels to believe that he will overthrow God. Angels have free will, just like us. But wouldn't would they be called something else? Because angels... Demon! Okay, demon. So why do they still call them the angels? <laughs> Should well, they just say the devil and his demons? No, 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 no. See, the way in, in the in Hebraic teachings of the Word of God, the way it's written in, in Hebrew, it's called messenger. Okay? Messengers. Angels are messengers. We translated that through the Greek, which are angels. Okay. And the way, God, the way the Lord speaks about it is a, an angel is one who is sent by God to give a message to his people. So they're messengers. 
Basically, yeah. here to the message from this so and so messengers of God, which we interpret and translate it into. But these angelic beings are for real. Where did that word come from? Angelic beings. And have angelic beings. Angelic means that they're. If you look up an angel, you see brightness. You see this. You yeah. see that. Okay. So. The demonic angels are ones that are corrupted with themselves. Mm -hmm. Okay? And they believe the what he, whatever he told them. Verse 41 says, mm -hmm. And I'll say unto those who depart from you everlasting chains and does prepare for the devil, the devil and his angels. Listen to what he says. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. Selfish. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. Selfish. I was a stranger, you did not take me in naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, you did not visit me. Then you'll answer me, so Lord, when did we see you? Hungry, thirsty, stranger, naked, sick, or in prison, and did not minister to you. Okay? Then he'll answer saying, surely I say unto you, as much as you didn't do this, at least one of these, you didn't do it for me. Yeah. And what's the last part? It says, say it louder. Um, and these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Okay. So, is this metaphorically or is this reality? Reality is yeah. real. It is real. This is why many don't have an understanding of the literal hell because. People look upon themselves. I'm a good person. Yeah. Yeah. There's no way I'm. I'm. You know. I know I make all these mistakes, but really, I'm a good person. Come on. Yeah, I heard that before. How many believe that? I treat other people good. I treat other people good, but you reject who they are. <laughs> yes. Okay. So when we look. How, and throughout the Bible, the book of Ezekiel talks about the same thing. Okay? God, and uh, Ezekiel 33, God commends Ezekiel and tells him, hey, tell the watchman that when judgment comes to warn the people, and God will, and what God is doing right now, I believe that God is sending us warnings to prepare for the worst things to come. In the book of Ezekiel 33, we find that. He says, okay, he said, you don't have to look at it right now. But he says that to you and I. He says if we don't do these things, okay, if we don't prepare and warn people, that's what I've been doing all this time. Warn, hey, you need to repent. No. And the more warning is, same thing happened to me years ago. People start fleeing and hiding. I don't want to do that. Pastor preached too much on sin. He's warning us that hell is going to break loose. But then yet, these warnings that we've been hearing from the Word of God, and look at life right now, look at our society right now, where it's at. These are the eye-opening warnings. Yes. Okay, I'm pretty sure you're going to tell me, though, but these people that stormed this, the, the, what is it called? The, 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 the capital. The capital. They, I'm pretty sure they read their Bible, right? No. no. So none of them knew what the Bible that... You know what? Let me tell you something. Okay. Now, people disagree or whatever. Christians are not, a, in my point of view, shouldn't take sides. We have a voice. We should say who we trust. I trust God. Amen. If we look at a certain person and he holds the values that we hold, then vote for that. Okay? okay, not because of his uh, take on the money or power or, or anything. Did we vote this guy in and he makes, what did he really do? He, he got the economy going and he blessed Jerusalem. Was he a believer in God? I don't know. They say he repented. Uh, did somebody take the time to teach him about humility? I don't know that. It doesn't look like it. Okay? If I had to take a view of being a Christian or not, slim. 
But then yet I look at the other candidate. He's, he's a Catholic. That shut me down just right there. Okay. I mean, he talks about God. He talks about this. But then, then all these other socialists are involved in his life. It's who you hang around with. Now, this other guy, he had him with these pastors. They're all suspect to me. Okay, they're all suspect. Yes. And the best thing that I ever seen him do was bless Israel, um, make Jerusalem capital, stop the money going to Iran, uh, seal up the borders. Okay, those are all great things. Those are good things. Um, his conduct and his attitude, sometimes it was good. Most of the time, he just spoke his mind. Okay, and from what we learn through politics, uh, uh, how the world sees it, that he shouldn't have done that. That's what the world says. Personally, me, I'm glad he spoke what he spoke. Okay, right or wrong, a man's opinion is a man's opinion. Now, society says that's not presidential. Okay, but then yeah, you're talking to a world that doesn't know what it really means. To be saved. We have lost, Christianity has lost its Christian values because of power and money, mega churches. They lost their way. They allowed, instead of being a voice when Obama was president and saying, hey, homosexuality is wrong, the covenant of marriage between men and men is wrong, it's between man and wife. Christianity stood by and said nothing. They allowed it to happen. Okay? Because he gave money to silence them. And the people that did speak up, they got persecuted and they got thrown in jail for it. No, say taking a stand for it. Say no, this is not right. So and then you have all the things how he did the mainstream you know people this is why people talk and if you believe one commentator this person right you know the word of God is there with us for a purpose yeah. okay our point of view and our opinion is contrary to what the word of God says our focus as believers are to focus on God to focus on staying out of this place called hell. We got bigger mm -hmm. problems rather than worrying about who's the next guy. Because he's not going to change it. He can't change the devil. Can't. Why? The Bible teaches us. Okay. So, so, how much time do we got? I can't see from there. 11 days. Well, everybody knows that real quick. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to try to make an argument over between. But I don't like arguing over politics because it gets you nowhere. Yeah, it's Man, I got a family member who he just wants to argue the point. I'm like, I don't want to do this. Well, what's your opinion? I don't have an opinion. <laughs> Me and my wife were talking one day, and we got into not to an argument, but we got into a disagreement. And I was like, <laughs> So you see what it does. Let's argue biblically. I could do that. Well, that's the whole thing I'm just saying. If these guys should have known, if, if they would have just read their Bible, they know that this would have been coming. Wouldn't, they, wouldn't you think? You know, the funniest thing about that is that the, the, this, this America was founded on the Bible. It sure was. If you go all the way back to George Washington and, and the, be the beginning of the presidency, they didn't really know how to govern. They knew how to govern, but to get to their points, they needed to look through Scripture. Did you know before they started every Senate meeting or whatever, they started with prayer? They started with prayer. Yeah. And the laws came from the Bible. Everything. Why they you know, in the beginning, you can be, if a person was caught in adultery, you could sue them. Yeah. Yeah. You can send them to jail. I mean, there was a lot of laws in there. 
that we're governing from the Word of God. And all that got taken out because of atheism. Yeah. Yes. An example of that was Thomas Jefferson and somebody were discussing uh, something in the Declaration of Independence where it said the life to pursue and happiness. One of them that I was discussing with him was an atheist, Sir Thomas Jefferson. Atheists cause, because why? They don't believe in God. Yeah. An atheist <laughs> is like a false preacher to bring in, amen, their belief. Right? You know how many Muslims are in, are in, in office right now? A lot. Quite a few. A lot. And what's their agenda? One world. You know Christianity? There was Christianity and then there was Catholicism. They were mostly mostly Catholics in the early days of taking office. <coughs> okay? And then there was, uh, you know, you had Baptist, Protestant, but they were had the foundation of biblical in their lives. Okay? Uh -huh. The Bible in their lives. All of a sudden, that just flipped. Many years later, now you got Islamic coming in. Yeah. And, yes. Yes. So, so... All these things don't lead us into a great place, okay? And I don't want to get into too much into the, to uh, <laughs> away from all that, but the apostasy, the apostate, okay, that's happening, the falling away, is because of these things. My whole point is, is that if you look at society where it's going right now, uh, we are in the Book of Revelations. We are in the last days. Of the Losaria Church, okay, and, and and he says this: as many as I love, I rebuke and I chast chase them, I re I correct them. That's where we're at right now. That's why all this stuff is happening in our world, okay. And it's not going to get better because you know what every what America likes to do: throw money at it, okay. So if we Look right now, what do you think is the blackest days are ahead of us? Oh yeah. Darkness. This is we're in a time of darkness, man. Well, you're bad. Okay? People are secluded. They're 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 quarantined. And quarantine is not good. Okay. We just read in Jude chapter verse 13. Okay, oh who wants somebody read that real quick? Jude. Chapter 1, verse 13. They are like wild and like wild waves of the sea, churning up the foam of their shameful deeds. They are like wandering stars, doomed forever in the darkest sky. Okay, doesn't that sound like our world right now? Yep. Can you read that louder? Just yours says it different, right? How oh, yours describes it. They are like wild waves of the sea, churning up the foam of their shameful deeds. They are like wandering stars, doomed forever in the darkest sky. See, that's that's what we're seeing right now. That is exactly. Our nation's divided. Churches are divided. Those accusations trickled into our government, trickled into the church world, trickled into society. Okay. You could remember in all even right now it's either you're a Trump supporter or you're Biden, and there's arguments and fights. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's all. It, that's all this is doing. Everywhere. Okay, yeah. and and when that happens, it leads Christians into a bad place. It leads us into a bad place of hating each other. Okay, you can't talk politics anymore. Okay, you can't. You can't talk. It's bad enough to talk about. Okay, let's say you know we can. If you went out to witness to somebody and you told them, "Hey, why go to Christian outreach?" Oh my gosh. Okay. That's true. That's what they believe. What makes us a cult? How do they know? No, they hear it from other people. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you, yeah. One of you leave the home and go, man, that, I wasn't at home, and that director, that pastor, that her, and, and the word cult comes out of your mind. What's the yeah. definition of cult? What is that? Well, it's a man who controls your mind. Okay. It's a, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Jim Jones. Yeah. <laughs> cult. Yeah. yeah. I was trying to control your mind. And then, then Jesus was a cult then. 
Okay? I mean, you think about some of the ridiculous things that come out of people's mouths. And it causes friction. Yeah, they just want to destroy them. And that's their whole hope. They want to kill the very word. And they're setting up a, 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 a bad place for their lives. That's why it's, it's important for us to repent. So the Bible teaches us many examples, okay, of, uh, okay, now the spiritual fire of God, okay, is what the Holy Ghost fills us with. But the literal fire of, of, of hell is there for those who don't keep it. What things can we hide from God? Nothing. But people do. Well, they try. No, they no you hide greed. Yeah, but he knows. Greed, you hide. Yes. What else do we hide? Come on, you have them all. Everybody has a phone. Come on, what's on your phones? Porn. Porn. <laughs> Lust. What else do you hide? Music. Music. What else do you hide? That sin of anger. Yeah. Pictures. Videos. <laughs> you know, sometimes I feel like the dentist. <laughs> Pulling out teeth? Yes. Just to get a comment? Yes. No, because, no, you guys think, you think by saying these things, just throwing them out there, is that why I want to hear it? I want to hear the truth out of you. But you're afraid to say it. I only had one person tell me one time. He said, you know, I just want to use this place just to get off the streets, just to stay cool, just to stay uh, warm, get my food, and move on after that. I don't want to hear biblical stuff. I don't want to say, well, you're in the wrong place. Open the door, throw you away. You see, this is why I didn't want to, I didn't want to tell you anything. Try to go take that to anybody else and see what they're going to tell you. Oh, no, he, we won't bother you. Just get your sleep. Don't do nothing. No worry. We'll feed you. We'll take care of you. Here's your complimentary. Here's your complimentary stuff. I took that. Here, have a cup of coffee. You're blessed. I don't want to go. I don't want to be bothered. That's why I tell people we're not a shelter. We are a program. Okay? Programming means we have all these things to do. Amen. So I don't want to hear what you want me, what you think I want to hear. I want to hear the truth. Okay? If you truly want to learn, you truly, and it takes takes a long time. Now, my, okay, I'm going to say this again. I probably said that a thousand times. Young men that passed away were sitting in the very chairs you are. Okay? I can see Adam. I can see Chris, Skyler. Danny, yeah. Skyler. Skyler used to sit here, just Fresquis. Mr. Fresquis. Okay. Madrid. Uh, Mr. Madrid. He always raised his hand, asked me the weirdest questions, <laughs> and they're all dead. Well, sitting in the same place as you guys are. Glory. Hmm? What was his name? Glory. Oh, yeah. Rodney. Rodney was 70 some years old. And didn't you say, sometimes when you look at us, you can see them in, in us? Oh, absolutely. Because we, there's people that act just like yeah. how they used to act. Self-destructive. Not mm -hmm. really. So, you, so <laughs> you do have a guy that gives you weird questions. Not so much the questions that are weird, it's the, because you're being dealt with. The characteristics. The character, yeah. Okay? No one likes to be put on the spot. You guys take it like, oh, pastor's pointing me out because he doesn't like me. If I didn't like you, it would not be. True. Plain and simple. Okay? If I did not like you, I would not let you back in. Thank you. <laughs> He's talking about me. <laughs> Thank you. So, listen to what I'm saying. I think each and every, and I've said this over the years to them. I know, you know, one argument I had with one individual, 
Because he didn't think hell was a literal place. It was symbolical. Because he studied the Bible just as much as I did. Well, hell. Yeah. And, and, and I, I, I couldn't believe the things that he would challenge me on. Okay? And he was far-fetched. And because this young man has been through all kinds of programs, been under all types of pastors, that no one ever told him the truth. He, he spoke to a lot of evangelist, evangelists. If you go around and you look for prophetic people, they'll give you all kinds of nonsense. Okay? And they cause a lot of problems. This is why I know for sure. I know a man who knows so many pastors, okay? And he'll tell you, well, one pastor said this, one pastor said that, one pastor. So when is you going to ever use your thought for yourself? And look at it for yourself. And your conviction will tell you that this place is real. Okay? Paul tells the church at Corinth, you can have many instructors, but you have one one problem. Thank God I have my pastor. I don't have to go out and say, you know, well, this pastor told me this, this pastor told me that, that pastor told me I heard some good men of God in my time. Okay? I've been around a lot of great men of God. Okay? And I have maybe, when I quote them, I say it's them. Okay? And they, these great men of God always taught me one thing. Look for yourself. Pray on it yourself. God will show you. Okay? Now, I believe God uses men. So you can have a lot of people tell you, but the end result, okay, I can't even imagine those souls that are standing before God are looking for all these pastors they talk to. Where are they at? No, God's saying, this is between me and you, buddy. <laughs> so all those places you can travel to in your travels, okay? I went here. I went there. I went there. Ask yourself, okay? What good has it done? What good has it done? How many programs have you been to, Simon? This one is I went to Daniel uh, Murphy and Okay. And Albuquerque? No, the okay. hospital. Well, even that. What good has it done? Who does it boil down to? Okay. It's like, how do you want to be dealt with? Now, if I went to the Marines and changed my mind because they were too rough and went to the Army. <laughs> okay. Guess what I'm going to get? Same process. I'm going to get somebody still screaming at me. Okay. So I turn around and say, you know, those two didn't work. I'll go to the Navy. They can't yell. <laughs> That's right. Making <laughs> you know what the problem is? All of them have in common? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> huh? Authority. Authority. There's a process that is, this Bible places us under the authority of God, under the authority of Christ, under the authority of men of God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Okay? So if we have the understanding of all that, Christ is the head of the church, which in turn he gives what? Some to be apostles, some to be pastors, some to be evangelists, some to be preacher, uh, teachers, all for the working of kingdom. Okay? So if we know that hell is a literal place, and how many compartments are there in hell? Four. Or what's the okay? Let me just say that it's gonna be in the questionnaire. I promise you. Okay. Oh, okay. You remember this one? Tartarus is the worst place. 
Go out, you feel it. Let's say it together. Tartarus. 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 Is the worst place. Is the worst place. Hades. Hades. Okay. Uh, what's the other one? Gehenna. Sheol. Remember those? Okay. How do we stay out of these places? By repenting and believing in our Lord. So. As the New Testament describes heaven and hell, it's not a symbolic picture. It's it's how we picture it. I'll never know. I want to have. Yeah. There are pictures yeah. of hell. Yeah. You ever seen that one that has a place where they're throwing the angels are throwing men and they're screaming and they're yelling and fires burning and there's all kinds of accounts, okay, of descriptions of all this. So. It's not your perspective. It's God's perspective. Okay? He does not want anybody to go to this place. Okay? So, it's not a metaphor. It's not symbolic. But it's an actual place. It's real. It's very real. Okay. I don't want to ever go. How many departments are there? I believe there's six. Six. Okay. Yeah, uh, how, many, how many gates are there? How do you know where they're at? Bermuda Triangle. It was triangle. Volcano. That's going to be in the questionnaire. So you want me to tell you, see, isn't it? Look at the stop right there. Let's stop right there. The purpose is, no, I didn't say stand up, I said we're going to stop right there. We still got, believe it or not, we got. Two minutes. I will take up all two oh. minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you can do that. Okay. So, so listen to me. I know this may be a sketchy <coughs> subject because it's going to deal with our character. Okay. The purpose of dealing with your character is not to hurt your feelings. If you got your hurt feelings hurt, it's not my intent. Okay. It's to help you. Okay. Um, it makes all these things. Believe it or not, should. Move in your life to uh, tell your family members. Pray for your family members. If you're concerned about a brother or sister or whatever, then start praying for them. Remember, if you've got children, be aware. Pray for them. Okay? You don't know at any second that their lives be taken. Okay? You'll never know. It can happen to any one of us at any given time. Okay? Someone, especially with right now with this pandemic and everything that's going on, you know, the saddest thing that people are dying. Everybody's not 2021, everything's in the chase. Panic's gonna go away. That's not true. It's not gonna go away. Okay? The vaccine come in. What happened? They thought, okay, we got the vaccine, yeah. But now there's a new strand. Is there or isn't there? I don't know. Okay? All I know is that you guys need to be prayed up. If there's anything that you're twisting the word of God, for any one of you, do your diligence so you won't be called a hypocrite. There you go. There you go. Okay? There you go. Don't mislead anybody. You don't know something. Ask. Don't give out false doctrine. Okay? There you go. You don't know I'm going to say this. I'm going to stop right there. You can cut that off. Okay. Cut that off right there.